Okay, it is October the 5th, 2021 at 6.10 p.m. I'll call to order the Keystone Heights Airport Authority Board of Directors meeting and ask each of us to please stand for prayer and then Pledge of Allegiance. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege that we exercise tonight to do the business of the airport. We pause to give you praise for who you are and all the blessings that you have bestowed upon us. Lord, there are many in this room who have family and others who are sick. We pray for those tonight and ask that you bring a strengthening and healing touch to them. We pray for our first responders and our military men and women that you keep them safe. Bring them home to their families, Lord, each night and after each tour of duty. Keep them in your care. Give us wisdom tonight as we do the business of the airport. We give you praise for these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please be seated. Ms. Hitt is not here tonight, so I will uh, do roll call. Uh, Vice Chair Fryer? Here. Chief Denny, not here. Mr. Cornegay, here. Mr. Rashar, here. Mr. Harvin, here. Mr. Dajanay, here. Ms. Rutowski, here. Mr. Prang is not here tonight, and Ms. Whitney, here. All right. Let the record show that we do have a quorum for our business tonight. Um, I have not received any public comment cards or requests, uh, so we'll move to item two. Um, Ms. Rutowski was here earlier with Mr. Dajane and Mr. Richard assisted with uh, the swearing in. So we have sworn him in and he is officially a board member of the Keystone Heights Airport Authority. And David, we're, we're glad to have you with us. Um, why don't you share a little bit about yourself that, like you did at the Keystone City Council meeting and um, you know, what your experience is and what well, you've been thank doing. Thank you. Um... Well, actually, I've been involved in aviation ever since high school. Um, about right after high school, went to a uh, aviation maintenance school myself. Uh, I graduated, obtained the uh, A and P certification. Uh, following semester, went back to school, learned to fly uh, in a Blanca Satabria, so which was which was a lot of fun. As a matter of fact, I recovered that airplane while I was in A and P school, so that was that was really neat. Um, so. Uh, I worked in general aviation all my life, but at the same time, uh, about a year later, I joined the Navy. The Navy moved me to Florida, and uh, so uh, NAS Cecil Field, as a matter of fact. So uh, I worked on uh, A7 jets for uh, for four years, and uh, so uh, after my active duty period, I, I worked at the as a civilian on the base for a few years, and uh, while uh, uh, staying in the reserves. And I did retire from the Navy Reserve in 2001, where I finished my time uh, on the P-3 aircraft as a flight engineer. So, um, so those planes are not born to me outside there. <laughs> um, so, uh, amongst all that Be careful, time, they might want your help at some point. <laughs> oh, I don't know if they'll want my help too much. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, in 1997. Um, we moved to North Louisiana where I managed a small airport uh, for a few years. Um, it was an airport smaller than this. Um, we had one runway and, and uh, so that was my um, uh, airport operations experience uh, for five years. So I learned to work with the, uh, this, the state uh, DOT office a little bit and the, uh, the local regional FA office for airports. Um, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, it was pretty much a closed airport when I got there, and uh, so uh, there was quite a few improvements that were made uh, during that time, and even after that time, uh, when I left. Um, and uh, so that was that was pretty neat to see those uh, ach achievements made uh, while I was there. So um, since 2001, I've been at Florida State College, back at Cecil Airport, um, where I helped open an A&P school there. And uh, which I am retiring in, in December from the college. So, um, 
So uh, we've had a good time there and, and uh, seen a lot of students graduate and get jobs all over the, all over the country in uh, aviation maintenance. Uh, over the years, uh, I've uh, went from just a private pilot with an instrument range, commercial pilot, flight instructor with the instrument and multi-engine uh, uh, privileges on that flight instructor certification. And uh, so I'm probably going to continue on um, as a designated mechanic examiner with the FAA um, for as long as it works uh, there at the, uh, the college. So to help folks uh, pass their practical exam for that. Very good. Um, that's you have that's a hanger kind here? of it in a nutshell. Do you have a hanger here yet? I do. Okay. I do. And I'm very thankful for that. <laughs> so I own a Cessna 152, which I've owned since 1988. Um, I've had to rebuild it uh, almost totally one time uh, due to an arson fire at NES Jacks mm. uh, in 90 or 91, something like that. So, uh, but since I uh, rebuilt it, uh, it's been flying ever since. It's been a great little airplane. So a lot of folks have had their uh, check rides in that airplane. Uh, in fact, a few folks who are now working in the airlines have had their check ride in that airplane. <laughs> there you go. Well, we're glad to have you on our board. Thank you for um, serving and um, look forward to um, using your expertise and experience and, and just furthering the airport here. Well, thank you. I look forward to helping in whatever I can. All right. Uh, item three, the consent agenda. I believe all of us had gotten a late email from uh, Ms. Hitt. Uh, what you have in your packet are the financials for August 2021. Uh, the September minutes for our meeting on the 7th, uh, we'll make those available to us in our November meeting. So I'll entertain a motion to approve the financials for August 2021. So moved. Okay, I have a motion by Mr. Cornegay. I'll second. Second by Mr. Fryer, uh, Rashar. All right, uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. All right, hearing no opposition, motion carries. Uh, item four on our agenda, uh, Bill Prang is not with us tonight. Um, we do have um, some information Mr. Pring has prepared for us. Um, the pre-application for FAA funding for the construction phase of Taxi Lane Pavement Rehab Project. Um, this will be a FAA project that will be funded next year. Um, it's for, uh, let's see, they are designing it this year. They're starting to design, as he had mentioned to us, that test boardings have been done, surveying has been done. So all that preliminary work is um, being wrapped up so they can finish the design phase of that. Uh, this pre-application does not obligate the board to anything now. It's just the funding request for the FAA, FAA funds for next year, uh, 2022. And we have a resolution for both of these. Um, Ms. Whitney, do you have any input on this as well? Um, I believe it's it's just for the design because FAA is paying 100% of the design of this project and then we will be, uh, FDOT will be participating in the um, construction. And I was saying, which I get their fiscal years mixed up, so, because um, I know we have some money and I guess, 23, maybe that's what it is, 23 for construction, but this is just for the design, 100% design of that project for FAA. Okay. Um, actually, there's these resolutions are... That might be for my... Yes. <laughs> yeah. I started to say I'm going to let you address the one on the... Um, well, actually, for both of them. So anyway, Bill will bring uh, more information to us in the November meeting. Uh, about the taxi lane project. So the next item that um, I believe he would have had um, 
or Ms. Whitney, did you have the resolution items or Bill had put these together? Um, is that for the new PTGAs? I had submitted um, the new grant agreements last week to Maria and I thought she she told me she had printed everything so I think it's for the equipment purchase yeah, and for okay. the lighting project. Yeah, so this one is for the purchase of safety and security equipment at the Keystone Heights Airport and um, it's eligible for $100,000. So yes, I was bringing that up um, before y'all for approval tonight. Okay, so we need a resolution, we need a motion to approve the resolution. Um, <clears throat> And I'll just is that FA funding you're no, referring to? No, this is or? FDOT. This is FDOT. state yeah. funding. Oh, okay. Yeah. What's the resolution number? The resolution number is FP number four four zero zero six one dash one dash nine four dash two two, in the amount of one hundred thousand dollars. And it's approved to for y'all to execute the. Uh, PTGA for the uh, equipment purchase. I'll make a motion to approve resolution 440061-1-94-22 as presented in the amount of $100,000 as a grant fund from FDOT District 2. I'll second that. And all the equipment that y'all have on your list is listed in a exhibit A so that we could, you know, cover, make sure we're covered with what y'all wanted to purchase. And then if you don't get all that for a hundred thousand, that's fine too. But I know y'all are working on trying to get all that purchased. I think Mr. Fryer's been very involved yes. in mm -hmm. I think you know. getting those <laughs> getting those hurts. numbers pulled together. <laughs> all right, so we have a motion and a second. Uh, all in favor of approving this resolution say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Hearing none, motion carries. For that resolution, FP 440061-1-94-22. The second item is for design and installation of lighting for runway 1129 here at the airport. That number is FP. 431288-2-94-22 uh, and that is in the amount of $583,000. That's only for design or no, that's the installation? Design, exactly. and this design covers, and installation. This covers the new estimate that um, Bill, you know, the engineered estimate that he came up with um, because we, we were short money. so. I'd added money to it. Do you know, before we go any further on that, we were talking about that the other day. <clears throat> so I believe, and if Bill were here, that'd be a good thing, I guess, but I believe that circuitry is tied into Taxiway Bravo and Taxiway Charlie lights. So, and Luke, you correct me if I'm wrong, but we're having shorting problems out there on the runway, correct? Where correct. it's going to ground? Yes, sir. Is there anything for new taxiway lights coming up? I don't know if they're part of that same circuit, but I kind of thought they would have been included together. They're not. They're not. They're well, not. I'm asking her. You well, you're not I don't aware think of anything programming in the fight in your five no. work plans specifically so. for right. Road, road okay, well. and that's why that's why, Mr. Fryer, it's it's not in that five year work plan. Um, we've talked about in the past that we do have certain sections that we're having some issues with and we actually looked at what would it take to get the whole taxiway lighting done problem is it's it's less than 10 years old mm -hmm. and FAA won't even look at it until it's at least 10 years so uh, but to your other point about them being separate I think for sure we need and I think they're on the same circuit they're not. They are. Yeah. They are Taxiway lines has a different transformer. Yeah, They're isolated off. They okay. Are. I think that each circuit has its own transformer, okay. so there is separation okay. there. Runways okay. are, really are on the same circuit, but each runway is separate and alpha is separate. Taxiways. Correct. Okay, I couldn't remember that. I, I mean, if there was funding there or whatever, 
I mean, I could have always included it, but I don't think probably that would. Well, that's probably what the problem is. It's been replaced of, within the time frame, so I was just curious. So, so it's less than ten years old. Right, and we have to go. What like is it like twenty years or fifteen? I don't even know what it is. That's and out there ways. So. I know Bill has addressed that with us before. That that's one of the issues that we have. Do you remember when the so, we'll problem started down. appearing? Uh, probably the day after. It's pretty persistent. <laughs> <laughs> we have a lot of lightning here. <laughs> oh, it, yeah, we've we've had some issues. I mean, there's lightning issues, and hopefully, right. uh, you know, there's better protection stuff now that will be installed with the runway project. You know, we fixed a lot of it when we did the taxiway rehab project a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. All of that got fixed. Mm -hmm. And some of the additional areas that were shorting out with the runway lighting, 523 runway lighting, was fixed at that time, too. Right, right. So... Well, I was just curious because I don't know it's been so long since I've seen those taxiway lights on. We'll, they, we'll have to look at them they, and see. They looked good Saturday night and Friday night. But that's only on Taxiway Alpha. I think Bravo and Charlie are shut off right now, aren't they? Are they on? They're on, but everything is Where have I been? I, I think, you know, I think, Mr. Farris right. I, down Bravo, Charlie, further down, there are some fixtures that aren't working. To so at least 50% are not working. Yeah. Okay. We'll just take a look at that on our maintenance thing. Right. I was just curious. So. Mm -hmm. I'll make a motion that we approve um, Resolution FP 43128-8-2-94-22 in the amount of $580,000 for design and installation of runway 1129 runway lights. All right, that's 583,000. 583, I'm sorry. All right, so we have a motion. We have a second. Got to restate the motion. I just got it. <laughs> I'll second. All right. All right, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. All right, hearing none, motion carries. Um, all right, uh, Miss Whitney, um, what else you have for us? I think that was it. <laughs> oh, wow, okay. <laughs> she, well, uh, she brought $683,000 tonight. So yeah, be nice to her. <laughs> she has earned her seat at the table tonight. Miss Whitney and, and her staff have been fantastic you, to this airport. Uh, thank you, Ms. Whitney. We greatly appreciate all that you do personally for us, you know, here at the airport and yeah. helping find some additional funds when we're coming up short. You know, it, it's one of those deals with that five-year project. You put something in, and for that particular year it gets put in, there's, there's that estimate that's a probably a good estimate, and then five years later it's just... Especially now with the yeah. prices going up. So hard to keep up with. We thank you to chat, so. <laughs> thank you to FDOT and and Miss Whitney working <laughs> to to help us find those extra funds to make up that difference. We greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Um, on the items under mine, the minimum operating standards workshop schedule. I believe each of you have received the email from Maria about the progress we've made and some specific areas for you to look at and provide any feedback if you have any. Uh, what I would like to do though is go ahead and let's schedule what I think will be, I won't jinx it I hope, but I think it will be our last workshop to wrap up our revised um, minimum operating standards. So uh, if you'll grab your calendars, let's take a look at um, this month, um, the week of the 11th is going to be a tough week for me. I really don't have any openings uh, unless we. Well, Monday is a um, it's Columbus Day. Yeah. So, and the rest of that week, I'm I'm not available. So, what about the week of the 18th? Or the week of the 25th, what's your preference? I'm pretty flexible on either one of those weeks, but I'm like you, I'm busy next week. Um, except for the 21st and 22nd, I'll be out of state. Other than that, I'll be good. So you're available the 21st Eight. and 22nd? Uh, not available. Not available. Not available. How about the 19th? 
do you want to do it early again? What time do we? We time of day. Three. 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 Three to yeah, five. Yeah. Three to five p.m. Three to five. I'm is, that, is that good? I know it's tough Chad's on you, Chad. Chad's going to be with something. I'm going to be the 27th. Chad's doing it. Don't worry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Missed it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, so 3 p.m. Yeah, Tuesday, let's, Tuesday, let's October. do um, October 19th at 3 p.m. Okay. I'll write it down. No promises. <laughs> <laughs> I presume Miss Hitt will send out a calendar invite. Chair? Yes. Yes, we'll get a calendar invite out. And we may just go ahead and attach that same information she sent to us last week uh, for review as well. All right, the litigation balance sheet. Uh, this last project that we added for adding uh, drainage for this area just outside of our little well house and parking area, um, that's being completed. So I wanted those numbers included in that final um, spreadsheet. So I'll bring that back to us in our November meeting. Um, Okay, that's all I have. Um, Mr. Corningay. Wander Media. The county has partnered with this media company um, through the TDC, the Tourism Development Council Commission. I never can remember which it is. But in any event, there's a grant available. Um, the The total cost of the, of the commercial is $5,000. The TDC will pay half. So for $2,500, expense to the airport uh, this professional media company will come out and produce a 60 second commercial uh, they call it b-roll I'm not in the television business but that means something special I presume it means that there won't be like anyone interviewed or there will it'll it'll just be footage of the area and it'll be like voiceover a narration yeah. narration so uh, the Lake Region Development Corporation took advantage of it and we actually did the shoot um, week before last and it took us nearly eight hours to capture 60 seconds worth of yeah. a mm -hmm. B-roll. So uh, we um, we brought them out here to the airport, and the two guys, <clears throat> the two technicians that came out, cameraman um, and interviewer guy, they were absolutely fascinated with this place. I mean, they both said this was, the, of all the shoots they'd ever been on, this was their favorite one. We took them over to the firm, and they got some footage over there, and they got to drive or ride around in the cars. And, it's a, um, I think it's a very, very good opportunity for the airport. The way it works is once once you contract with them and the and the commercial is produced, it becomes your property. It'll become the property of the airport, and it will also air for us to do whatever it is we decide to do with it. But in addition to that, it will also air from Orlando to Savannah. To Savannah in resorts, restaurants, and other tourist areas. So I was at um, I was at a water forum last week in Orlando at Rose and Shingle Creek, and they had one of those screens there, and well, they had many of the screens throughout the resort. But you know, just the very idea of the, the airport being featured down there in one of those resorts on a 60-second commercial is, um, I think, it's something that that could be worthwhile. And you'll. I, we investigated the cost, um, LRDC did, before we committed, and you, you won't find a better value when it comes to, to this product. But in any event, I would, I'd like for us to talk about it, and um, if there's any interest, we could, uh, we could go ahead and approve it and get on their schedule and execute a contract with, with Wonder Media and the county if, if, the, if it's the will of the So if the it board. was on TV... Do we have to pay some type of fee every time it airs? I mean, I mean, well, you have. My, my thought is, <clears throat> I mean, certainly you could do that if you wanted to do it on network television, like right. one of the local stations or whatever. But primarily, I think your uh, your platform would be your social media, your, okay, your, mm -hmm. your Facebook, your Twitter, 
um, with LinkedIn accounts. So the, the actual commercial that they produce that goes uh, into these tourist destinations. So package. Yes, and then all content that they that they shoot while they're out here then becomes your property. So you can take this professionally shot content and then put together your own clips so that mm -hmm. you can utilize them for social media and whatnot. Um, or, uh, or when y'all went to Tallahassee, you could have contract, it on the TV behind yeah, you, exactly. you can contract exactly. with an editing company, somebody who's capable of doing that. Um, with technology, you can do it yourself now. But all of that professionally shot content now belongs is property of the airport to do with what they will. The commercial itself belongs to Water me Wander Media, and then that will go to specific sites. Okay. But all the, I mean, they were here for 10 hours, and I think that they probably shot a good three hours of footage total for our LRDC, all of that content will belong to LRDC now. And so it's a fantastic opportunity. Tourism mm -hmm. is, is Clay County Tourism. They're very excited to partner with the airport. They're looking at different ways that they can come and uh, expand their their footprint out here. Uh, I know that Kimberly Morgan is extremely excited and hoping that the airport will be on board and it will quickly execute it and fantastic. Um, the, the footage that the LRC was able to get at the airport just on a whim was amazing. Yeah. I can't imagine with Maria being able to stay to plan for and it. things like that. It, it'll be fantastic. I think you mentioned, or maybe Mr. Cornier had mentioned, that uh, this company will send us some questionnaire and some yes, other information. So you'll be 100% right. ready. Right. Um, Whoever is going to be the one to interview, they do ask that the, it's it's one person, and then they'll feature areas like the firm or other uh, entities that you have here at the airport as well. So you'll be there's no on -spot. yeah, and it's very there's like no pressure. It's very low key because you can obviously you can redo anything that you not right. that you're not comfortable with. So mm -hmm. we did the we did the interview part at the pavilion in the pavilion, and it took us what two hours for about. Five questions, five questions because we kept you know we kept doing it polishing it yeah, yeah yeah so if we did this we could advertise that all of our um airline flights are always on time here at keystone <laughs> <laughs> um, well, that's the delta the, connection the framing that you can build into the back i, I really right. support it i mean i think that 2000 I mean, from someone who is in marketing to some capacity i know what we spend in some cases in order to, to build packages like this that's extremely cost effective for what you get. And the fact that you mm -hmm. own the media afterwards, aside from the 60 minute clip, I'm under the understanding that that is proprietary yes. to Wander Media. However, uh, taking that other footage and having it put together to the benefit of us at council, at uh, commission meetings, at wherever we wish to use it, especially at Tallahassee, um, and I presume, do they use a drone as well, or is it strictly... There was no drone footage taken that they day. They had the capability of drone footage, uh, but he, he got right down the middle of that runway and, and got underneath the plane as it took off. So Okay, yeah, so there's there's good opportunities. So Put uh, a camera on an airplane, too. Sure, yeah, you can mount a camera on an airplane and do whatever oh you want. Oh, my goodness, you'll make those boys so excited. You put them in the air. <laughs> <laughs> make sure you do some spin. They, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, I firmly support the the, uh, the venture and the expenditure of twenty five hundred dollars. Okay, uh, we need a we need a motion. Oh, I think it'd be good to approach it not only from a, a tourist aspect, from but also agency. from the aviation business aspect for the airport. So I think that's your yeah. target yeah. right there is your your pilots. Yeah, yeah. like say if they're these resorts or. Uh, I agree with it. So, if you so make a motion, with them. yes, sir. Cost is five grand. Total we're, cost we're, is five thousand. TDC the will pick up twenty five hundred, and the airport will pick up twenty five hundred. Yeah. Gotcha. I'll make a motion to approve the um, the option that was presented to us by Mr. Cornergay from Wander Media. Second. To, I'll second that. All right. Um, <clears throat> how long? I, just question, Scott or, or Lynn, how long will the 60-second promo run? Is that, do they give us a window of how long it would be out there in this broadcast realm and viewing? They do give you a window, however, I don't know what that window is. For some reason, I want to say 12 months. I, don't hold me to That's that. That's what I was going to say as well, but I, I don't know why yeah. I believe it's 12 months. But I think it's a 12, it's it's not season specific, it's not timeline specific. It's just 
destination specific, and it, mm -hmm. I, I believe that it, circul it circulates for 12 months. Okay. And then other than that, we could put it wherever we want as well. Yeah, wherever we want it. Yep. yep. Well, another thing, forming a relationship with them as we grow, sure, we'll we'll be in contact with them, and if it does well in that twelve month, maybe we spend the twenty five hundred yen. Then we may not get that. Um, right, we can't be guaranteed of the grant money. The the grant money, but we could pay the five thousand ourselves later on. So well, I think it's an excellent idea. It also helps for the tourism to be successful. So if this is a program that they have that's successful, they'll, they'll continue. Yeah, they'll figure right. Out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So your one five two will do barrel rolls, or <laughs> <laughs> maybe. <laughs> all right, we have a motion and a second. All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. All right, hearing no opposition, motion carries. Um, Can I else? say one of the things? Yes, sir. Yes. So I followed up with the conversation that we had out here a month or so ago with Congresswoman Kamek um, a couple of times with one of her aides, and I've, I've not, I just can't get a response. I'm having trouble getting a response. So I have the Congresswoman's cell phone number, so I'm probably going to resort to just giving her a call and seeing if we can get some, get some uh, response that way. But I just didn't want the board to think I had not have you tried an effort with Ms. Norfleet? That's who I'm okay. talking about, yeah. And the idea there, the purpose for that is to see if someone in her office could pick up the telephone and call the Orlando ADO and ask if they could uh, move our EA along. Um, but Have you spoken to Mr. Prang about that? No. Okay. My my opinion, I would speak to Mr. Pring about that first. Who is that? He's our consultant. He's our engineer of record. Engineer our consultant. consultant. Yeah. Oh, okay. So yeah. I, I, I think as a courtesy to Mr. Yeah. Pring. Don't get ahead of him, yes. sort of thing. Yes. We'll see him tomorrow at the grand opening, so maybe we'll okay. pull him off to the side and see if he's heard anything, because I know I, I got a copy of an email from Armando um, about some money for project next year so there's apparently some conversation going on so maybe Bill can give us an update. All right. Thank you Mr. Cornier. Um, Mr. Richard. Yeah just the only item I have is just to recap on the uh, air ops veteran hunt that we hosted last weekend. We had five veterans and five volunteers total. We had a big camp if you happen to stop by. Yeah. Um, there are a lot of vehicles out there. Uh, <laughs> Thank you for the support from the airport. Mr. Fryer helped. Thank you to Luke. Thanks for cleaning up camp for sure. Mr. Kirkland and, and uh, his wife brought out breakfast one morning, which was greatly received. It was fun. Um, we did manage to participate in the harvest of some animals that was necessary to help with the control of interactions with airplanes. So we did, we, that was successful. Um, it was a lot of fun again. It was very hot. It was 92 <laughs> on Friday. It was 89 on Saturday. And it was 85 as a high on Sunday. So that made it troublesome. But however, we all endured and had a good time. One of my, uh, one of the, the gentlemen that's helped me with this for over five years now does some amateur photography. And so he took some photos and put together a quick video. So Morgan, would you be willing to share that video with the group? If she can hear the can, microphone, technology working. allows. Might have to walk across the hall. <laughs> oh, that's right, because she can't hear the audio. Yeah. Right. Okay. She said that the video should work, but the, the audio won't be available. That 85 degree heat kept me out of the duff for Sunday. I didn't go. It's warm. It was warm. It was, it was, warm. It was warm. hard to sleep. It was hard to sleep at night. That was the most challenging part. Yeah. Friday night was was very challenging because it was humid. Yeah. I was more worried about Lincoln than me. I just don't want to run the risk of getting him overheated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If the video doesn't work tonight, I'll bring it back tomorrow. The computer says she doesn't have the right player to play it. Okay. I'll bring it back to the next Okay. Meeting. Yeah. I'll Sorry about that. Definitely bring it back. Any bear photos on there, too? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Are All there right. any videos of people being chased by bears? <laughs> None of that. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, let's make sure we don't include that in the uh, <laughs> uh, TNC. And, and to go along uh, with Mr. Richard, I think he does a fan. I think you do a fantastic job. Thank you. 
and um, more and more the thing I like is when they come in they they're organized everything's in order and when they leave everything's <coughs> cleaned up y'all dump the garbage or everything or maybe Luke right. did but it looked real good after y'all left and uh, and now we're in our new fiscal year I believe so we should be able to get that roof done and get right. the concrete under there and make the accommodations and it sounds like we need a parking garage <laughs> uh, addition, no so. we have plenty of shade trees I, I do agree though that um, I, I think more than just this event, though, I think that that will become an asset to the airport from, it from truly some is. ability. But it, and also to protect the infrastructure that we have. Because right. if we don't invest something in it, it wouldn't surprise me if there isn't anything to work with moving forward, mainly right. because of the roof. Right. Yes. True. True. It's starting to degrade. So. And we may have to look at upgrading because I saw a number of RVs that you know were brought in this time too. So we may have, as we're doing that renovation and upgrade we have to look at some of those electrical services and some other things down there that sure uh, to consider for future events well it's a good beta test right you can look and see you right. know, how that's run and see how someone else might use that environment and how it could benefit them but yeah I did I did recommend that if they had a camper to please bring it because the only air conditioning that we have is what you bring with you <laughs> that's right that's right yep. you say that event was for animal control um, that's a portion of it, yes. A portion of it, yeah. So, um, Operation Outdoor Freedom is a statutory, uh, let's see, how do you put that? It is set up through the Division of Forestry, mm -hmm. and um, basically if you are a uh, disabled veteran or a Purple Heart recipient, you have the ability to, to put in for it. Mm -hmm. And those events range from fishing to sporting clay. They're, they tend to be outdoor in nature. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that um, this airport has allowed me to do is to host two events a year. Mm -hmm. and, and one is a white-tailed deer hunt and the other is a turkey hunt in the spring. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And it's good for these, aren't these um, men and women, um, don't they have up to a 20% disability? 30% percent Yes, sir. Yeah. So it's, it's um, something that he caters to try to help these people where they couldn't normally go and hunt. Maybe some of them are, don't have the ability to climb a tree stand, but they create blinds for them and whatnot. So mm -hmm. it's really a good thing. And I think it helps the soldiers or the Yeah, parents. it's a ton of fun. It Really, it, it comes down to fellowship. And mm -hmm. most of these people are just looking to enjoy themselves and just like we yeah. are. Whatever hobby you have, right? It's an right. escape from your day-to-day -day operations. We have a fall uh, air ops event and a spring air ops event, mm -hmm. and a spring gobbler hunt as well. So. Uh, and I agree with Mr. Fryer, uh, Mr. Richard. You do a great job every year. You've been doing this for since eight? 2016. Um, so are you going on five, six uh, years? Yes, yeah. sir. Yeah, yeah. That's so, very good. It was either 2000, 2016. No, I believe the first of. Yes, it was. That was true. Yeah, because that was the year I started city manager, and I remember that was your first. Okay. First run at yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Is this something you can foresee expanding the numbers, or does the Division of Forestry determine the numbers you can have based on the acreage here? Oh um, no, there's there's definitely room for numbers. It just so comes if, down to span of control. Okay, so if we can get that facility a little bit better and a little that bit better, help. maybe you might be able to have eight people. Yeah, that, that would help. Yeah, okay. I'm not making any promises, but right. the facility is one of the controlling factors. Right. Really, span of control. My span of control is one of the controlling. Right. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Richard. <coughs> um, Mr. Uh, Fryer, airfield mm -hmm. update. Okay. Um, so many of you may know that um, Mike Brackenberry left us, uh, turning his resignation, I guess it's been three weeks ago. And Luke Four, who is sitting right over here, has worked for us a number of years as a part-time employee, but he's agreed to take over in the interim. Um, we'd like to keep him longer, but um, right now you're looking it up until April as of right now. So anyway, he's, he's our acting airfield manager, and he and I have been working a lot together. Um, I think he's doing a fantastic job, but one of the things I wanted to share with you that we've discovered is, um, and I believe I brought it up before, uh, we have been practicing more reactive maintenance and we need to get into preventative maintenance. So Luke has been working on um, writing some maintenance procedures for all of our equipment down there in the shop, our um, uh, tractor, bush, bush hogs, bat wing, that sort of stuff, the lawnmowers and all that so we can keep these things in better shape and make sure they're getting the necessary PMs or oil changes and whatnot. Mm -hmm. 
So appreciate your efforts and uh, please welcome Luke to the <laughs> staff. So, okay, on the uh, septic tank. Um, so we we still are trying to work to get that septic tank behind MHD Rockland replaced. Uh, we do have the well abandonment. We've got the uh, that has been completed. We've got the documentation and the uh, contractor is going to file that with Clay County. The only thing we're waiting on, and still haven't gotten a call from regional, uh, but we're waiting on a third bid for um, the electrical to be run over there for a uh, sewage lift macerator pump for the new system. Uh, we've got the fire hydrant down there behind corporate, behind the corporate hangar that's still leaned over. Um, right now I've got uh, a contractor out of Jacksonville scheduled. They're going to be here uh, the 13th, which is next Wednesday, I believe. So <clears throat> some of the things we're doing, too, is we're looking at alternatives for a way to save money. We had uh, three different bids. I think we're all, well, rather two bids that were rather expensive, outrageously expensive. So we're going to rent a mini excavator ourselves. It'll be a lot cheaper. Uh, this contractor is going to work based on um, um, labor and materials. So you're, it's you're considering just trenching it yourself and then having them. Yeah. So what what I did is um, through Mr. Kirkland and his relationship through Clay Electric, getting eight one one before you dig to get in behind the fence here gets a little tricky. I've had to do that before. And we know that there's no gas lines out there, and we know there's no communication cables, so that basically leaves power and water. So through his contacts, he was able to get uh, Clay Electric to come out, and we found out where the underground power is, and it's nowhere near it. So we're going to dig ourselves around the hydrant. And we think we're going to save about three thousand dollars doing this, so it'll be quite substantial. Um, the equipment grant uh, that we just approved the resolution on, and I don't want to get into too much depth, but what we're looking at doing is we're looking at a side by side, you know, just a, a buggy. These are things that uh, uh, have been approved by DOT or whatever. Uh, one will be another um, small tractor replacing the old Ford that's down there and a six foot bush hog. We're looking at a new uh, 20 foot bat wing. We currently have a 15 foot. Now that extra five feet when we're mowing the infield to make it more uh, efficient. And our John Deere tractor we currently have is, uh, is good for that. Um, also a hydraulic dump trailer. There will be a new Unicom radio for the front desk up here. This one we've had, I don't know, it's been around the block a few times, but we'll be getting that. And I think that's all the big ticket items. I think there was a few little items. but. And I didn't specifically, like, I think there was a Ranger. I didn't, like, put the make and model. Or the brand name, right. In case there's some. I just put, you know, what type of piece of equipment. Right, like, right. Specific. Kind of a generic description. Mm -hmm. Like a tractor or, you know. Something. Well, and the other thing to know is um, since this is state pricing, we have to go to dealers that offer state pricing, and Futches happens to be one. Um, Texas Trailer in Gainesville is the other for the hydraulic uh, dump trailer. So those do not have to be bid because they're already set at state pricing. Uh, much like we've got in the lawnmowers in the past, the city acquires the equipment the same way. Uh, but we're wanting to build a relationship with Futches because they have uh, two, at this time they have two mobile equipment trucks and they're able to come here to the site because they've got a location right here in town. And uh, in the past, I think we were paying AgPro $500 round trip to pick up uh, the big tractor and take it to Gainesville or High Springs and then back. So. So we're doing some things to try to get more efficient. Okay, the um, RPZ or runway protection zone for the approach for 2-3. I have cut um, all the brush back to the gas line now. We had um, trees or saplings that were of concern that were coming up and going to be a problem. And then just in the last two or three days, I've been working on the RPZ for 11. We couldn't get in there because it's... Uh, that's some low-lying land. I don't know if that's considered a wetland back there off the end of 11 on the north end of the field, but it's 
When we have any substantial rain, it's mucky out there, and if we take the tractor in, it just makes ruts. Mm -hmm. So I finally got about, what have we had, 12 days or 15 days of no rain? <laughs> so I got in there. I've been in there, and I'm tearing everything inside up. And I've seen a lot of rabbits, if you want to hunt those. <laughs> Uh, Morgan continues to work on uh, the vacant hangers. I don't know, I'm not sure how many hangers are available in the T hanger, but she does have a list she goes by and she's working on that uh, to get those occupied with new leasors or leasees. Uh, the other thing, and I've thought about this for a long time, but I talked with uh, Miss Hitt. And it's well within our budget, but we're going to have street lights installed on Airport Road coming in. So we're not going to do every pole. We're going to do um, every other pole in some areas. We're going to get, there are actually two lights up there that should be working now that are not working, I don't think. But they're supposed to, um, I talked to Kelly Dial at Clay Electric. We're looking at $10.53 a month per fixture. Um, so we're going to get five fixtures, and then I'm going to have him upgrade two of the fixtures we currently have to LED. So it's going to be very minuscule, but I think it'll help safety and security on the road. And the final thing is... When you, st when you install those lights, mm -hmm. what's your offset from edge of pavement that you're considering? Wherever those poles are at. It's on the existing poles. They'll oh, be on, on the, the existing, existing poles, yes, right. right. So, um, yeah, what they have to do is they have to be near a transformer, and there's a couple places. I think they're going to have to install one transformer. The others, the transformers are sequentially close enough. And I did inquire about interference for aircraft coming in. He assured me everything is down lighting. Correct. So there shouldn't be any interference with the aircraft. So there won't be like any approaches. additional power poles installed. It'll be using no. the existing. Okay. They're just going to be hanging them on there. And... Um, so it will offer some illumination in case somebody breaks down. Um, a lot of times I see rubber tire marks left on the road. I'm sure that's from school buses or, you know, something making abrupt stops. Maybe it'll stop some of the street. There's, I think there's some racing going on out here tonight. So. Well, after you race for hours at the firm, you have to figure out. And that, oddly enough, is where it usually comes out at. <laughs> you just haven't so. had enough. It's that one last hurrah. Exactly. Uh, finally, uh, we've got some uh, Army uh, helos coming in here on, is, is it the 14th and the 17th, Luke? 13th and 17th of their flight days. Okay. So they're going to be operating uh, down here off of uh, the approach end of runway 23. So what we did is um, on the north side of the runway, we've gone and cut back 800 feet long and about, I think I'm about 200 feet now deep. So they'll be setting up helicopters. They're going to have uh, mobile fueling, and I think this is mainly a training exercise for... Are they guard or regular army? Regular army. Okay. So they're going to have a couple of fuel trucks out, and they are going to buy how much fuel from us? Close to 8,000 gallons. Okay. I just spoke with them today. Okay. Excellent. So more, more sales. <laughs> <laughs> and those operations will be going on at nighttime, so nobody other than me should be affected by them where they fly over my house in that right pattern. <laughs> But, uh, no, we're glad to have the military here and uh, love working with them. You got anything to add to anything I said? So, Okay, that's all I got. Thank you, Mr. Fryer, and thank you for all the time you spent out here, all the work you've done. I know you love the John Deere. I see you in it all the time. I do. It's <laughs> on Sunday. It's Sunday air conditioned. Saturday. It's air conditioned. That's the, uh, well, the only problem I'm having is Luke's got me. I'm now getting here at 5 o'clock in the morning so I can get to it before he grabs it. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Uh, just one question with respect to that fuel. So are, are we making sure that we're covered because I don't know what MHC Rockland's... That's correct. That week and the next week for ESG and Rockland are going to be using a total of about 20,000 gallons. So I'm talking with flight engineers for their fuel loads for that week to make sure that fuel deliveries show up on time but not too early because we can only hold about uh, 18,000 gallons at a time. Right. So. Okay. Just want to 
when I heard that 8,000 number, I knew they were also using some, so we want to make sure we coordinate there. Okay, great. Very good. And Luke, good to have you full time with us. Thank you. Uh, we appreciate you helping us out. Um, all right. Um, Chief sure. Denny is not with us tonight. Charles, I don't have an agenda item, but okay. are there any other um, updates for tomorrow? Anything's changed? Yes, sir. For the grand opening tomorrow. Yes, I'm sorry. Oh. It's at uh, 4 p.m. Yeah. And so we'd really like to have all of you here. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> I mean, we, you know? we had a good response back for um, our invites. I haven't, I haven't heard anything. Yes, I believe so. So I believe that she's at about 40 that have confirmed oh, wow. that they're going to be here That's and good. reached out to both Clay County and Bradford County earlier this week. Uh, just to make sure that it was on everybody's mm-hmm. schedule, um, so I think that it, it'll be a really good turnout. Mm-hmm. Very nice. Yeah, we had a big number for the um, groundbreaking yes. back mm-hmm. April thirtieth, two thousand nineteen. It's been a long time. And yeah. uh, it's crazy that it's been that long ago. Um, I was just looking. So from tomorrow back to that ground opening uh, or groundbreaking, uh, eight hundred and ninety days. Uh, I mean, it's it's not that our construction company was that slow, but you know, with the design phase and then the bidding and then the actual construction, and then we had this pandemic come along that uh, also created some issues and and that, and that hindered us from having our grand opening. So uh, yes, tomorrow uh, we're excited about it. Uh, another big milestone in in the airport's history here. So. Uh, please, all of you be here. Hang around because there's going to be some photos taken as well afterwards after the ribbon cutting. And uh, so please uh, stay for that as well. Does you know? Business dress, I presume. Yeah, let's do business yeah. dress. Yeah. yeah. And she is going to have some uh, finger sandwiches, I, I think. Gonna she's going to have coffee, tea. Or whatever. Yeah, but so. there won't be any alcohol. I don't think she's going to have any alcohol. It's just coffee and tea or right. something yeah, like that. Yeah, the bakery's right. provided some. Sp- Special treats. And, uh, in his office. Uh, I think she's got some other items oh, uh, that she's having brought in trays and. But Miss Head might might not be here under the working assumption she may not be here. She, if she shows up and depending on how much pain med she's had, she <laughs> could she, be entertained. She'll be here. She, she the just, may not yeah. Be here. Yeah. <laughs> okay. She'll be here. And then, Luke, you're coming to pick up those tables tomorrow morning, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay. And then I'll be here after uh, I have funerals to attend, and I'll be here to help with any kind of setup after that. I've reached out with Ms. Head, so. Do we anticipate the event lasting until about 6 o'clock? Is there a thought in mind? I think the program's going to be short, pretty short and sweet. Um, and then after that, it's just kind of mingling and okay. Do you have talking. a photographer, or we just... Someone dedicated to take the photo? I don't know. She, I know she had called uh, Dan Hildebrand or, or whatever from, isn't he with the monitor? Yes. Or, yeah. But yeah. I don't know. Um, I'll, I'll give him a call tomorrow and nudge him. Make, make sure he's, make be sure nice he's to there. have a dedicated yeah. photographer as opposed to just kind of winging oh, it with sure. cell phone. Yes, I agree. And I don't know if you want to speak or anything, but I've got a sound system I'm going to bring out. It's got a microphone. Okay. Yeah, we'll need that. Um, was Were we borrowing the cities or? You know, I've got a podium she was talking about, but I don't know. So uh, there's a podium and a sound system and then the tables that Luke's coming to get. Okay, so uh, you've already got that. Yes. Maria's already got that covered. Okay, so you're going you're gonna to loan her our y'all sound system. Yes. Okay. Yep. How okay. much of this was, is, was planned to be outdoors? Or do you know? Because it's... Um, rain on everybody's parade, well, but like 50 or 60 so chance there, of rain. There, there. There's contingency plans okay, for the, in place, I believe, but there was a portion of it that was going to be outdoors. It was going to be a true ribbon cutting from the the runway side of it into the building. Uh, that was just something that she was planning on doing a little bit non traditional because it is an FBO office. Right. With that being said, if the weather's looking gloom, she does have a backup plan right. so, for inside. So. We okay. It'll be great. Bring, a good time we'll be having that. Not between the four. Just yeah. bring your umbrellas yeah. and your slickers. <laughs> yeah. And stuff. Um, well, if we're going on that side, you're waiters. Yeah. And <laughs> if the wind's not blowing, that porch yeah, it's fair. keeps you pretty well sheltered. And there's plenty of room. We can clear out some of the seats in the lobby there or whatever, I'm sure. 
Well, I think they were planning, she was planning on doing some of the tables mm -hmm. that you for stand the, at yeah. for, right, right. for the Jeez. social time, yeah, yeah, the high tops. And, yeah. Yeah. Set up similar to Miss Lonnie's retirement party, I, uh, of sorts. I think so, yeah. Food, I think, is going to be in here and so on. Okay, if you can come early, we may need some assistance, but um, look for everyone tomorrow. Um, Chief Denny's not here for the camp planning updates. I don't know of anything that's going on at Blanding. Um, I guess there's some hunts that they're having probably on the South Range uh, off and on. So that may be why. I think Chief Denny last time was here, she suggested there would be very light activity during the yeah. month of October. Yeah. Get some fun. So they're out of money. Yeah. yeah. All right, on Miss Hitt's part, she had mentioned that the next Nitro meeting is October the 7th. Uh, just a reminder that the Jeep event, uh, they're going to be having a meeting or two prior to that event, which will be in November. And so that's that's on, on track. Uh, I don't know about the 140 update, so we'll just wait and hear about that at uh, the November meeting. We've talked about the grand opening uh, for tomorrow. Um, so I think that's pretty well covered everything that she had listed there. So, uh, Ms. Rutowski. We continue to have conversations about the feasibility study for water sewer here at the airport that's progressing at the government pace. Um, but with that being said, at the last night's council meeting, we did set a workshop for October 27th at 3 p.m. It's going to be a project workshop. I encourage the airport to participate as water sewer is a huge priority for both the city and the airport. And with our funding and additional with grant writing services, I think that that really needs to be on the, the, the front of projects that we do over the next several years. And with that being said, that's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Uh, definitely uh, keep in mind that uh, October 27th meeting. I think we need to be there. I'll be there. Maria will be there. But um, it's going to be normal there anyway for LRDC. But um, I, I think our presence there uh, certainly sends a message to our council that we're interested in what goes on at the airport. And uh, we're there to participate and help in any way we can. So, Lynn, do you think do you think it'd be should we um should just one person speak one airport authority member speak well with it being a workshop there will be they're welcome to open dialogue and so i would encourage probably the chairman to be able to answer any questions it, it's already on their project list and will be uh, reviewed by our engineering firm and the, the county <laughs> as he's looking at me right now <laughs> um, <laughs> prior to for, for, for feedback um, but with that being said I would just be prepared to answer any questions as far as funding goes and then we'll have conversations with our engineer and a representative from the county will be there and how we can move this through what time is the workshop 3 p.m. so I have a question about that <clears throat> if we show up as a board are we participating in the workshop or are we observing the workshop so you, the, like I said, the, the chairman or any board member can speak to any item, but it is a publicly noticed meeting, and so you are covered within the sunshine. So we are okay yes. in the sunshine. Yes. Okay. And, and you can engage. Okay. You can engage the council. So as, a, as opposed to a city council meeting, the, the premise of a workshop is, is more for more open participation right. and right. less from the from council down. Right. There right. will be no decisions being made. It's just putting uh, things it is in strictly discussion. and then council will vote on it at their next meeting or two down the road. Okay. And, and a lot of this we've we've already, in the case of Ms. Rutowski, uh, that information has been brought before council members uh, with respect to the feasibility study and what that cost will be. Um, I think they've even received a copy of it. So. Yes. Um, it's just something that we've got to officially get out there. We, we even, Lynn and I were there at the legislation, legislative delegation meeting at Green Cove um, last month, and uh, the mayor addressed it, I addressed it, answered a few questions from um, our representatives and um, Senator Bradley. So um, it's 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 now now is the time to get this done because yeah. of some of the fun, federal funding that's coming in um, 
Now's the time to do it. Yeah, the money's there. We've just got to figure out how to get it. Project. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh, Chair, does Mr. Prang know about the meeting on October 27th? I don't know that he does. Yes. Not yet, because we just said it last night. Okay. So. I would yes. just I would put that on his radar because right. um, if I've understood correctly, mm -hmm. Mr. Prang has been a part of the discussion as far as the feasibility report goes or the study goes. AECOM will be conducting a feasibility study. Got it. So right. in my opinion, it would be best for him to represent it from a technical perspective. I agree. We'll uh, we'll let him know about it. See if he can.